Today we are going to look at if Mac Minis are good for photo editing, video editing, and gaming. The model I am using is the Mac Mini mid-2011 processor 2.7 GHz Intel Core i7 dual core memory is 4 GB of 1067 MHz DDR3 RAM startup disk is a 7200 RPM Western Digital Drive Black Scorpio Scorpion Edition running on Mac OS High Sierra. Graphics included in this model are the AMD Radeon HD 6630M at 256 megabytes video RAM. This is the highest edition of the Mac Mini 2011 you can get. You can upgrade the RAM up to 16 gigabytes, but some people reported there were issues with that. So the maximum supported by Apple on their official website is 8 gigabytes of RAM. Now let's do some video tests with iMovie. It might be a little slow because I'm recording the screen, obviously, which is taking some CPU and a little bit of RAM, and it's um, taking up the hard drive speed as well. You will find that you get the spinning beach ball rainbow, the gay rainbow, a whole bunch. Um, on At least I get it on my Mac Mini. That might be because CPU is being used too much. Uh, too much RAM is in use. Hard drive is what I found is the big culprit. I am using a Western Digital Drive Black Scorpion or Scorpio, whatever it's called, edition. And it's supposed to be a, a 7200 drive. like a. It, it's a miniature one. It's a miniature drive. But um, it it's supposed to be 7200 And they're being sold, used for $10 to $40, depending on the size. Uh, of course, of space, and I find that that it runs more as a five thousand is it five thousand four hundred five thousand two hundred whatever that one is. It runs like a laptop drive rather than a an, um rather than a than a regular hard drive. Obviously, it's smaller, small form factor. It's not large, but this is a this is a long video, sixteen minutes long that I was editing last night. A review. With 720p and 1080p quality from both the webcam and from a mixture of my Canon Rebel T5i DSLR camera, which you know those files are usually huge. Um, and here's how it plays, or at least part of how it plays. It is a 16 minute video, but I'm only going to show you the, the few parts of it. You can see it runs pretty fine. You do occasionally get lag on text when you're first editing something, but after all the uh, the effects and the clips render, you will find that you run into um, almost no lag at all for uh, text popping in and transitions and stuff. But that's usually after you edit the stuff, it processes through. It says you know complete. You can eject whatever disk drive you're using or whatever. And let me go to some other part of the video. And then you restart your Mac the next day or whatever. You come back on it 30 minutes later after everything's already processed. And uh, it runs absolutely fine. This one doesn't have a lot of cuts. It's basically just one clip. But let's see like the scene transition, how it works. And there, it transitioned. Like I said, usually if it's not all, like if all the clips are not processed, there'll be like a little a little um, circle right here of it processing. When it turns completely white, that means it is done processing. Um, and then, like I said, you restart your whole computer or you restart iMovie. Some people have, you know, different things happen for them. I experienced that. I have to restart my, my whole Mac Mini and uh, open up iMovie again, and then it'll run perfectly fine. Let me find another scene transition because I believe I have a lot of scene transitions. There's another one. Because a lot of the time, if you don't let it process, or if you let it process and then it's done, and then it goes to transfer to another scene, like uh, this, boom. It, it'll lag at first. That one didn't lag, at least not for me. The recording might have lagged, but it usually lags um, a little bit. So I've, on the Mac Mini, I have actually... Um, 
here's another one that comes the text that comes down there. How about this one? A scene transition that goes with text. Now, see, that's what I'm talking about. It like this, it'll be like a little bit of lag, and that usually only occurs after a scene. You go from one scene cuts to the other, and then you add text to that one. And uh, yeah, that room is absolutely dirty. That was Black Friday craze day. Just saying. Now I know you all are looking for the render times. So let's go to file, create a file, 720p at 60 fps. And 1.36 gigabytes. And let's see. I believe compress. How about not faster? How about best quality? Because that's what a lot of people are going to look for is better quality. And I believe I should go up to 20. Well, how far? I can go up to 16. On the Mac Mini 2011, you can go up to 16, which is pretty decent. But it's a lot of compression for a DSLR video. Hit next. Go to, let me change that name because I already have it saved. And there, you'll just have to look at this little circle right there. So it does get the job done quite well. It does take a little bit longer, but if you're like me and you're used to Windows super slow computers that take one hour to render five minutes, then only waiting 35 minutes to render out 7 to 12 or 16 minute videos is really not that bad. Uh, I'm not too picky when it comes to stuff like that. As long as it takes under an hour, I'm extremely happy. Let's move on to Photoshop. On discount from my school. Actually, my school gave me a discount um, on After Effects, Premiere Pro, and Photoshop. They actually gave me, uh, what was it? They gave me a discount on InDesign and all this other stuff, but I didn't have enough, um, I didn't have enough money at the time, so I just got the ones that, I, I focused on photo editing and video editing, and, uh, the Premiere tests on this are basically the same as iMovie. You, you get the same amount of, of lag with the text sometimes, and you have the same thing with the rendering, uh, pre-rendering of uh, files and stuff. In Photoshop, you do have some issues, which I've noticed pop up when it starts to load, that one of the issues you run into is it'll say you don't have enough VRAM, video RAM, and this one, um, Mac Minis have, they share RAM and VRAM, and like it has 256 megabytes of RAM built in, to the motherboard, I believe. But when you add more RAM, it adds more VRAM. And I don't know if I'm getting the thing, but usually it says you need 512 or 575 megabytes to do like some, some uh, freaking like fire effects and st stuff like that. And I don't really know that I'll ever use the fire particle effects and stuff. Don't know why it's not popping up when I actually need it to. But yeah. If you add more RAM, like if you go from 4 to 8, I believe this one guy says it gives you 512 megabytes of video RAM. And 8 to 12 or 8 to 16, like upgrading from 8 to 12 or 8 to 16, I believe they said it stops adding, but I don't know. There were different people saying different things. So Photoshop does load. It does work. I've done two or three text layers and then three effects layers, a mask, and then my background layer, and then two image overlays. I wish I could show you, but I don't have all the images back then, but this is just to show that it does load. There is no lag on Photoshop, but once I went over having 9 to 12 layers is when it started to slow down significantly, um, obviously. And this is with 4 gigabytes of RAM, mind you. 4 gigabytes of RAM, I've never been able to do this much on a Windows with 4 gigabytes of RAM. I've never even been able to edit, like smoothly with four gigabytes of RAM on a Windows computer. So, yeah, that's saying a lot. Photoshop does work. You get no lag. See, watch. I, I click and click and click and get no lag whatsoever. So, yeah, Photoshop does work, and so does Premiere, the same as iMovie. Last up is the gaming test on OpenMU Emulator.
Uh, as you can tell, these are games that I legally own. Uh, Medieval, I have the CD to these, I ripped these. Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, College Slam, and Brave Fencer Musashi Den. And now we're going to see how the Mac Mini performs with um, PlayStation 1 games. And I am using the Bluetooth on the Mac Mini to use my PlayStation 4 DualShock 4 controller. Let's see if that works as well. And yeah, playing with the PS4 DualShock controller, Crash Bandicoot. I don't know how the recording will look. The recording will probably look a little laggy. Like I said, I'm using QuickTime. And QuickTime, I don't believe this one lets you um, adjust FPS. I could be wrong, but... Yeah, the cutscenes, everything looks perfect. You can't make it widescreen on, on OpenMU. Um, which is different from uh, HDTVs now that can upscale and adjust the crop and and zoom and stuff but yeah it, it does not look laggy at all i feel like the what i'm seeing now i feel like i'm playing on a playstation one it may look laggy to you but like i said it's because i'm playing on the same hard drive that i'm recording on on an older machine but yeah all the buttons work you do have some issues with open mu resetting your controls I suggest right-clicking and force-quitting OpenMU, having your controller already linked to your Mac Mini if it has Bluetooth, and doing it that way. Because it, it will... OpenMU is not a perfect emulator, but, like, when it comes to controls and stuff. But so far, as you can tell, the game runs fine. No lag on, on my screen, but that could differ in the recording. And I have played, uh, just a, a, five minutes ago, I played, um... I played, what was it, Crash Bash with my cousin multiplayer, and it worked fine. Like, there was no lag even with two people. Because I found my um, my CD and put it in my external USB CD drive for my Mac Mini, and it played just fine. That's one that I have to still rip, though. Yeah, so if you if you plan on using it to play classic um, classic systems, I can verify that the PlayStation 1 works fine. I don't know why the others wouldn't work, but it, I haven't tested them because I don't have any games for them anymore. But yeah, you just saw me play through that whole thing, and it was absolutely fine. You will get some overheating issues. Um, so the fan will kick on quite a bit if you're playing a heavy, heavy game. Or when there are a lot of things around, like on Crash Bandicoot, when there are a lot of uh, enemies around, it will kick on for a bit. But once you get past that part, give it like a minute or two, and then it'll go back to having the fan be really low. So if you can get over a few of its faults, the Mac Mini is a great system for video, photo editing, and gaming. Thank you for watching and hit the subscribe and share button.